So today I want to talk about your options for planting clover. We're going to go over those three options today. We're actually going to take you out on one of our parcels. We're going to do some frost seeding. Now I know a lot of people tried to get their seeding done back in February when we had that big warm up. A lot of folks have been contacting contacting us this week saying, hey, John, did I miss my opportunity to frost seed clover? It's not cold anymore. I know Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, southern Illinois, Missouri, some places low uh, southern Iowa, even the Carolinas. A lot of folks are contacting us or buying clover right now and they're saying, hey, how do I plant this? And we're going to go over our favorite, uh, our three favorite methods for planting clover. Um, I know here in Michigan, you know, it was 63 degrees, I think, uh, uh, about 10 days ago, and it's unbelievably warm. The snow is all gone here. Uh, we had the opportunity to drive across UP, Upper Michigan, a couple of times down in the lower over the bridge. There's no snow anywhere, folks. I, I couldn't believe it. For late February, early March, we did not see any snow anywhere. Um, but Mother Nature is not done with us. It's, uh, I think, uh, 18 degrees last night. It's spitting snow this morning. We got some snow coming next week. So we're actually going to do some of our frost seeding today. So did you miss your opportunity to frost seed? Not really. Um, you could probably still do it in probably the northern half of the country. Is that freeze thaw action gone? Yes, it is. But uh, we're going to talk about some, some methods here uh, that you can still do, still look at to, great, to get a great clover stand for this fall's hunting. So obviously we'll talk about frost seeding. Okay, I don't think that opportunity is gone yet in the northern quarter of the country. I still think we're getting some cold nights and then you get the warm days that sucks the seed in. But the biggest thing I tell people is if you're going to frost seed, make sure it's a clean food plot, okay? Make sure you're, you're seeding into last year's cereal grains. That to me, if I'm frost seeding like what we're going to do today, that is my favorite favorite method if I'm going to frost seed. Now, a lot of people ask about brassicas. Can I frost seed in a brassicas? Sure you can. But the problem is, is a lot of those brassicas, especially the further south you go, are going to come back. If they didn't eat that turnip, it's going to try to throw a leaf. And what you can do is just mow that a couple of times. If you're going to frost seed in brassicas, keep in mind that some of the brassicas out there in some of the mixes, I believe ours included, there's what's called an allopathic effect. It's got a natural weed killer built in. So if you look at a brassica plot that did not have rye added to it, that did not have clovers added to it, it's just brassicas. They're very clean. And so if you're going to frost seed, one of the rules of thumb is we'll add 20%. So let's say I needed to add, it's a, it's a half acre brassica plot. I want to convert to clover. We're going to probably do five pounds to the acre instead of, I'm sorry, we're going to do five pounds in that half acre instead of four, okay, to compensate for that. I typically, to deal with a brassica plot, I'll hit it once with the tiller and I'll do oats, peas, and then I'll add my clovers to it in the springtime if I'm going to do that. But you can overseed into a brassica plot, but you just have to bump that rate up a little bit. Uh, the other thing I tell folks right now for frost seeding, we call it, you know, a rain seeding. A lot of these folks that are down south that missed the opportunity to frost seed, if you've got a good heavy rain coming in, again, it's a clean plot. It's, you know, we're not seeding into a horse pasture. We're not seeding into weeds and stuff like that. You can just go up before a good rain. And if you've got warm soil, you can seed before a good rain. And it's going to be the same thing. That seed's going to get driven into the ground. Again, we talked about the size of the seed, depth of the seed. The rain's going to pound that into the ground. And you're going to get good stand of clover. As long as it's a clean plot, you've got good soil and you've done your due diligence on your soil nutrients. So that's another option. If you don't have the option to frost seed, get out there in a clean food plot before a good rain. One of the things though, when I talk about a clean food plot, I don't want you to go try to seed clover in, in, and I'll just call it a horse patch root. Weeds, grasses, things that you need to take care of, okay? Because I don't like trying to spray my way out of a problem, whether it's a food plot like clover or switchgrass. I'm not afraid of using chemicals, but to me, you're better off to go mow that, get it sprayed, lightly work it up, and then come back and we'll talk about how we plant clover in the spring. If you've got a big weedy mess, I do not recommend seeding into it. All right, so spring planting. I still like to do this. If I miss my opportunity to frost seed or if I've got a weedy mess, what I'll do is I'll go in and mow it. I'll lightly work it up. And then when the soil's warm enough, there's no chance of frost. We'll add 50 pounds per acre of oats with any fertilizer. Lightly drag that in. Get it covered. Get that oat buried. Again, size of the seed, depth of the seed. Then we'll come back and I'll roll the 
uh, roll the plot flat. I like a lawn roller. It's so consistent. I mean, some of these called the packers with the big grooves, you see these monster grooves in that. Think about what you're doing to the little tiny clover seed, okay? I like a lawn roller. I'll roll the plot flat. Then I'm going to come back and broadcast my clover. Our clover blend is eight pounds per acre. And again, remember how we talked about half of the seed this way and then half the seed this way. Okay. I'll come back. I'll seed the clover. I'm going to pack it again with that lawn roller and I'm done. That's what we call spring seeding. I, you can call it whatever you want, but I just talk about spring seeding. Get the plot clean. Get your weeds taken care of. Get the weeds out of the way. Lightly work the ground up. Add oats at 50 pounds to the acre. It, it works as a nurse crop. Plus, if you've got deer to feed, they'll come in and eat the oats. They'll leave the clover alone. And then we're going to work that, uh, I'm sorry, you're going to work the oats into the ground just lightly. Now, we're only talking about half inch to an inch, okay, as far as working the ground up. We get the oats covered, roll it, seed the clover, roll it again. That's a great springtime. Here in, here in Michigan, we're probably looking at doing that uh, late April all the way into June, uh, July. I just think once these little clover plot plants get going, unless it's moist ground, it's in a bottom somewhere, um, if we get into dry, hot weather, if that clover just pops up this much and that drought uh, shows up or that hot weather shows up, it doesn't get a lot of moisture, you got a chance of killing that clover. Usually we're going to wait till late August to do this. Now, which brings me to the favorite planting uh, time for me for clover, and I like doing either one of these, but if I had to pick between the three, I really like fall. Again, we'll work up the ground. Make sure you've got a good kill. Make sure you're not going to deal with any weeds. Okay. I like a rye oat combo, probably 60-40 on the rye, even 50-50. But if you're going to hunt this plot into the gun season where you need green food, you can bump this rye up. Okay. Same thing. Get those big seeds covered, roll it, spread your clover seed roll it again. Now, if you want to add peas and radishes to it, back this radish rate down to about two pounds an acre. Um, but that works great. Now you've got your, your rye. Um, your rye is going to come back the following year and feed the deer. But what it's doing, this is all going to attract the deer and leave that clover alone. The clover is going to get a chance to build a root system. It might come up about that tall. I've actually had, when we planted here in August, I've had deer eating our chicory by October. It grows so quickly. But it's going to give that clover a chance to establish root. Same thing with the chicory. And then it's going to explode the following year. So a lot of the clovers that we planted last fall, as far as whites and chicories, are going to explode in April here once we get the warm weather. So this works extremely well. But the biggest thing is make sure you get your weeds killed I don't want to have to spring my way out of a problem. So these are the three methods uh, for that we recommend in our instructions. You go online, northwoodswhitetails.com. We've got a instructions page that talks about how to establish clovers. Now, a couple of things we get asked about fertilizer just for the clover plots. Normally, it's a low nitrogen, like a 6 24 24 uh, 9, 20, 30. I don't know if there's a 0, 40, 40 or something like that, but you really don't need a lot of nitrogen. If you're doing this or this method, you could probably do a triple 19 because that nitrogen is going to help these cereal grains grow. But for just clover, for maintenance, upkeep, something like a 6, 24, 24, very low nitrogen. Now, again, <laughs> If you're frost seeding, if you're spring seeding, and you're buying some of these big buck and the big seed companies, understand if you get coated seed. Okay, look at that seed take. Four pound bag, 40 to 45 percent inert matter, which is seed coating. It'll say seed coating. You also get annual clovers. The seeding rate for clovers is about eight pounds an acre. Understand you're going to have to plant 16 pounds of this to get eight pounds per acre. You might have to plant even 20 pounds because these annual clovers aren't coming back, especially if you planted them last fall. I'm gonna take you out to our garden in about two weeks and I'm gonna show you, we covered our garden as uh, with a cover crop and it had annual clovers, okay? Our clovers in our food plots are already popping. They're starting to show up. Guess what's not growing in our garden right now? The annual clovers. So if I would have counted on these annual clovers, planted them last fall, guess what? They're not coming back. There's a couple of annual clovers that might survive the winter in the lower states, but that's one thing. Pay attention. No coated seed in our blends, no annual clovers in our blends. If you're buying big buck seed companies with this, 
you may have to double that seeding rate, okay? Keep that in mind. Eight pounds an acre is what we're shooting for. If you've got 50% coated seed 50, uh, and, and annual clovers like Bersim, Bersim's the most famous one that these companies uh, use. Again, I've got, I'm looking right at the seed catalog. Cheapest clover there is by far, Bersim clover. All right, and they put them in these bags and they think they're doing you a favor. They're not doing you a favor, they're ripping you off. Okay, and I'm sorry if I'm offending you, but that's just the way it is. You're paying, I don't know, eight, ten dollars a pound for that seed, and you're you're paying for annual clovers. There's no need for that, folks. Northwoodswhitetails.com. We've got the cleanest, uh, best clover blends, I believe, on the market. So we're gonna take you outside. We're going to head up north and show you a couple of the projects we're doing, why we're choosing what we're choosing, and uh, we'll show you our frost seeding, our method, how we're doing it, the actual frost seeding, the setting down the earthway bag seeder, and we're going to show you some of our strategies. So let's head on up north. All right, so we're out on one of our hunting properties. We're standing in a small food plot just off the main food plot. This is, a, I don't even think this is a 16th of an acre, maybe a 10th of an acre. And what it was is fall forage sandy soil. It started out as soil builder uh, two years ago, fall forage sandy soil last year and the year before that. And we've got some really good organic matter going on here. Uh, very little work to the ground. So now there's a perfect layer of rye that's starting to come back along with a lot of dead oats, some a little bit remnants of buckwheat from last year. But what we're gonna do here is now, because it's so cold to get it up in Michigan, hence the warm clothing, we're going to overseed this, frost seed this uh, with our Seclusion 360. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite blends for the kill plots. This is a two acre bag. This is gonna do about a third of an acre, so we're not gonna use all of it, but we're just gonna walk back and forth here. Okay, the setting on the earthway, I believe is gonna be 1.2, and I'll show you how I keep my fingers down. I can feel the seed. I'm not gonna see much of the seed with this dark background. Now, our once we get the seclusion growing, the rye is also coming back, and I really like that about the rye. There's, there's a lot of food here, a lot of protein, because it's been so warm February and early March. It's not really warm today, but the rye is greening up here already, and these deer that are coming off a pretty tough January and early February now have 12 to 13% protein to eat, but now how we're going to take that into the spring, we're going to either come up here and mow it. There's a lot of rock in here, so I'm going to have to mow it pretty high. Mow it twice to kill the uh, rye, or we can do clethodim. I really don't like spraying if I don't have to, so more than likely we're just going to come in here with a mower, brush hog behind the tractor, set it about six or eight inches, and clip the rye a couple of times, and that'll take care of it. But now what we're going to do is overseed this plot with seclusion. I'll show you how we do it. Uh, perfect conditions with the rye and the dead oats and the dead buckwheat and we're going to have a great seclusion plot here going to be a phenomenal spot for bow hunting and like i said we're just off the main destination where we're going to change up that food as well earthway bag cedar is set at one point the way to do a lot of the broadcasting for me i don't know what my speed is probably two miles an hour walking nice steady speed pace i cannot see the seed but i can feel it hitting my hand so i know it's coming out if you were trying to get to where you could see the seed i'd be out of seed already but when i come past the cameras again you'll see my fingers are down and i can feel it i can see seed every once in a while but like i've always said just trust the process you can look where my fingers are and i can feel seed hitting it okay so i know the seeds coming out all right, we're on another food plot. It's kind of a sandy knoll. It's it's kind of a sand ridge that runs north and south. This is the, the little food plot that if you watched our 2023 uh, rifle season video, we had all the bucks hitting this vine right here. Uh, this has been cereal grains for two years in the hopes of building some soil. This is pure sand. I'll show this. I mean, look at this. This is, this is what we're dealing with right here. Okay, and we're gonna push it this year. Uh, we did overseed some seclusion last year. I can see a little bit of clover popping now. Like I said, it's really cold. I had to put the gloves on. It's so cold up here today. Uh, but we had 65 degree days. The, the rye is really greening up. And I'm starting to see some of the seclusion pop. But we're going to overseed a little bit more in hopes that it does well in this sand. This one we might end up, you know, just depending on how the drought is. If we have a drought, we talked about that. This might end up being put back into grains this fall if the seclusion struggles. I think 
the the um, I think the chicory is going to do well. And actually, I've got both I've got both uh, seclusion and chicory with me. I might actually just change my mind and just go straight chicory in here because there is a little bit of uh, the seclusion clover coming. But we're going to add a little bit more just because of the sand. That deep taproot with the chicory, I know it's going to survive. I'm fairly confident it'll survive. But that's what we're going to do here. We're going to overseed that. Now, talking about frost seeding, talking about having a well-prepped plot, this is what we're talking about, okay? I'll, um, I'll take the camera a little bit later and I'll show you what's around this food plot. It's all white pine. Um, blackberries grass and stuff that's not what we want to be seeding into this is a perfect environment not only for frost seeding but this is a perfect environment for if I miss the frost seeding window if I had to come in here right before a good rain and put seed down this is a perfect environment that rye there's a lot of thatch from the oats on here um, there's going to be a lot of rye coming up and then all you have to do is come in here and mow it once or twice and the rye is dead and that clover seclusion whatever you plan to do comes up in here and it does extremely well. This is a perfect environment for either frost seeding or what we call spring seeding before a good rain. That's going to work absolutely great. If you had to come in here and you wanted to add oats or cereal grain to this, you'd probably have to scratch it up a little bit to get those bigger seeds down. If you just wanted to oversee this with rye and clover in the spring and use the rye as a nurse crop, that probably is an option. You might not have to um, work the ground up but again this is sand and it dries out quickly so I would probably get those bigger seeds buried but this is uh, again a perfect example of a plot ready to go for either frost seeding or uh, seeding right before spring rain okay here's our here's our famous tree we're gonna probably change this branch out uh, this is the branch that they were hitting in that video and they absolutely just love this the the main food plot that we were in before is about 250 yards right through there so we want to put a travel corridor through here but let's talk a little bit more about seeding clovers and frost seeding this is perfect like i just said this is absolute perfect there's a little bit of rye coming there's some dead oat thatch in there but this is what we don't want to be seeding into okay if i had to seed into this can you imagine the mess i'm going to have to deal with uh, all spring and summer trying to spray and mow and kill grass, kill broadleaves. There's a lot of spring and there's a lot of work involved. I do not recommend planting anything into this and trying to spray your way out of it. I highly recommend if you're going to frost seed or you're going to seed before a good rain with clovers, this is what we're looking for. You can see a little bit of the clover already starting to come. You know, with that warm weather we had, there's a little bit of clovers, a bunch of them right there. I'm very curious to see how it does up on the sand bridge, the sand knob, but this is again a perfect environment to seed clover into. Just got our frost seeding done and then this hits. Perfect timing. So hopefully that helped uh, with your preparations and plans this year. If you're going to frost seed clover, you still have a little bit of time here in the north. I'm looking outside right now just as we got back to the shop. The sky's opened up and it's a blizzard right now, so we timed that perfect. Um, you know, if you're in the southern states or down south, obviously you can seed before a good rain or you can do some uh, tillage work. You can put oats down as a nurse crop. There's a lot of different methods or you can wait till fall and fall plant clover. But all is not lost if you've missed the the frost seeding time frame. So again, very important steps to take trying to get a great stand of clover. Watch for coated seed, watch for annual clovers. I do believe there's a time and a place for annual clovers, but to me, they don't belong in those very expensive clover buns. So hope this helps folks. If you've learned something, by all means, if you've not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. If you've got questions or comments, ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We got some great videos coming up with our friend Brad Harper. He stopped by last week. We did some videos. Very uh, educational, and hopefully you'll enjoy those as well. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you in a few days.